Hello everybody and welcome back to another chess video and today we're looking at the Queen's Gambit accepted and if you don't know how the Queen's Gambit starts, it starts off with pawn d4, pawn d5, and pawn c4. Now today we're looking at the accepted version but from here there are many ways that black can defend and decline the gambit. However, after black takes from here, we're going to be looking at three variations. We're going to be looking at the main line, which is knight f3. We're going to be looking at a variation you see a lot, which is pawn e3. And then we're also going to take a glance at pawn e4, because I've always wondered why white doesn't play this immediately, and hopefully you will see in a second. So anyways, let's get started. Now, from here, after white plays e3, we're going to first look at what happens if black decides, you know what? I'm going to try to defend this pawn. So there's a few ways to do this, obviously. Now, there's the bishop e6 version, which I personally do not, I don't suggest defending the pawn at all, as you will see in a second, but this is definitely not a good way to play, because after the knight comes to f3, the knight will then have threats of coming over to g5 and attacking the bishop. Meanwhile, the bishop is blocking the e7 pawn, which is very vital for this bishop and then the queen to come out. So overall, it's just not suggested, and if you see this, then that's perfectly okay. You'll have an easy game, meanwhile black will be stuck trying to get out. So we're also going to take a look at what you'll probably see more often if they try to defend it, which is pawn b5. And from here, white will play a4, and from here there's a whole bunch of ways to defend the b5 pawn, which is defending the c4 pawn now. All of them don't work, I'd like to mention, but I'm going to start off with a6, and from here... Uh, it's actually white can just go ahead and take, and if black does take, you can see that uh, the pawn is actually in between. It's being pinned by this rook. So once the pawn takes, we can take the rook, which is at the moment not being defended by anything. So pawn a6 doesn't work. We could try pawn c6 from up here. White can actually go ahead and take still. And after queen f3 attacking the, the rook, there's actually no good way to defend this. White could try something like sacrificing their knight, but from here you're obviously a piece down, so it won't be very fun to play as black. And set up pawn c6, you may try to defend with the bishop. Now either way, it doesn't matter where you go, e7 or a6, it doesn't make a difference. We're going to just say a6. After the pawn takes, the bishop will take. And from here, we're going to play knight c3, and from here there's two ways to defend the pawn and then also defend the bishop. Uh, black could try something like c6, but from here after b3, which is actually really, really devastating, there's no good way to defend this pawn anymore. There's actually no like actual move if you look out. Um, and if black does decide to take, then after knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, and so on, you can see that this is a very lovely, lovely game for white. They are actually tied in material, but as you can see, White's got this open file, they've got more pieces activated, meanwhile Black's kind of stuck right here with these three pieces. Should be a very easy game for White from here. Now if uh, White, or sorry, excuse me, if Black instead tries, instead of defending with c6 to go to bishop to a6, here there's actually a very nasty move, queen f3, and from here they have to play c6 obviously to protect the rook. Uh, white can go ahead and take the bishop, and if the knight takes, then you can see that once the pawn, uh, queen takes the pawn, they have to defend with the queen. You can take the rook now, they have to defend with the queen again, and as you can see, you are officially up in material by a lot, so definitely not a good way to play as black. So, from here, there really are very few options left. You can't defend with either pawn. You can't defend with your bishop. Now, this leads to the queen, and obviously, as you'll see, the queen doesn't lead to any good variation. If you try queen d5, knight can come out with tempo, attacking the pawn as well. So that's not going to work. If queen instead tries d7, that's not very be much better, because after the knight comes here, you will eventually gain the pawn, maybe by bringing your rook out or by bringing the knight out and then somewhere else, perhaps the e5. There's just no pro uh, no proper way to defend this as black. So this sparks the question, what should black play after e3 is played? Now there's a few moves you can play. You can either play something like knight f6. I personally play pawn e5. And from here, as you can see, just to give a little bit of a variation, white will most commonly take the c4 pawn. And after black takes a little bit of trade, 
And both knights come out, bishop can come out. It's a very drawish position from here, as you can see. Uh, both sides are pretty equal. Um, there's not really too much of a spatial advantage. Black can threaten in c5 sometime later on in the game. Or perhaps play something like a6 with the intent of following up with b5. There's just a huge number of plays that can be played on both sides. And it also um, explains why, if we scroll back here for a second, um, why white does not play pawn e4. Because from here, uh, black can play pawn e5. Obviously, white can't take because then after both queens are traded, uh, white can no longer castle. Meanwhile, black will have an easy time getting the pawns off the board by bringing either knight into play. Obviously, not into f6 right now, but if we scroll back. Um, so instead, you may see something like knight f3. Now once black takes and white takes, don't get me wrong, this isn't bad for white in any which form. It's in fact very drosh. It's just not preferred by many players. And this is also why you will see the main variation, which is knight f3. Now after knight f3 is played, you'll most commonly see something like knight f6. Now white will play e3 with the intent of taking the pawn on c4. From here, black will continue with pawn e6, and after bishop takes, uh, black will play c5, trying to get white back at white after they previously played pawn c4 in the opening. Now from here, white will generally not take, because if you take it once again, you'll lose the ability to castle once both queens are traded. So instead, white may castle from here, and from here I've seen two things. Most commonly, you'll see something with a6 with the intent of b5 following, but you may also just see black take from here. And this position, once again, it's pretty okay for both sides. There's not too much of a disadvantage. White does have a little bit of a spatial advantage. Obviously, this bishop's a little bit blocked by the pawn on e6, but white also has an isolated pawn on the queen file, which could backfire later on near the end game. So it's pretty drawish for both sides. It can go either way, pretty equal game. And overall, the Queen's Gambit, this is mainly the reason why people decline. They just don't like the spatial advantage um, white gets. So if you don't like this, then you will play something else. You'll probably decline the Queen's Gambit, which we will hopefully discuss in the next or in the next few weeks. Anyways, I hope you guys had an excellent day. Peace out.